wonderful Saturday. It is. And uh, I'm glad to have you in the studio. So Without uh, the hack. We ha- what, we're not being what, hacked. The well, hack is not here. We, we are not. Uh, our executive producer is um, on location um, <laughs> somewhere else. Not this location, turns out. So... Um, I think he's probably in an alleyway somewhere, just trying to. Just sort of well, he's woke you, up. Uh, you you uh, <laughs> can work that out with him when he comes. It's funny back, when I but, uh, last time I was in New Orleans, I always forgot what it's like when you're walking back and you see. Or we got up in the morning to go oh, to yeah, breakfast, New Orleans, and right. all the people who were drunk on the side of the street, <laughs> and these are not like homeless people. These look like people who. You know, just got drunk and couldn't make it home. <laughs> right, they were they, well dressed, but yeah, they were there laying. Some uh, of them on were the wearing sidewalks. suits. Okay, I just picture Hackett's like you know, like he had a really good time, and but he's not here. He he had a, we went out of town. He's probably like an Opelika. Or, uh, uh, no, it's probably it's probably further out than that. I'm not for sure, but um, he'll be back next week and he'll uh, he'll tell us all about this, it. Produce this show, by the way, that we're he about to really, have uh, here. I like uh, I like the hack. Well, sure. he's he's a pretty cool guy. He's helping us here. Yeah. We're. Uh, I'll tell you what. You know what I don't like about effort. that guy though. He's always undressing me with his eyes. That you know guy. that is not what you get to say. <laughs> you don't get to say that. I mean, I'm not you know, sure, I um, you you tell what, him next time. To do. I am not a sex object. I'm okay, not a piece of want, meat over you, here. <laughs> you want me to tell him? No, I'm not going there. And uh, that's not gonna. You tell happen. him I'm 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 a married man. This is not. You know, it's yeah. not. Undressing with your eyes, you know that's not a thing. That's not a thing that we can talk about here on this uh, on this podcast. So I have the opposite problem. I'm always dressing people with eyes. I'm like, you know what? Putting... That person should be really wearing like a wool hat. They should be wearing like you know a burka. A big coat I'm putting or something. I'm yes. slapping a burka on most people. Just yeah. kind of. No, so. that, that makes sense. I, I kind of I understand that uh, a little bit. So. Um, Yes. Well, it's glad, I'm glad to have you in the studio. So it's Saturday. It's always a good day. <laughs> yeah, you're trying morning. to find a way to erase what we just said. And I'm just going to try to reframe everything that just happened so that we uh, can talk about our topic today. And I'm wondering, what is our topic today? Toxic masculinity. Remember, we were talking about that. I remember, actually. I just wanted you to say it out loud. Toxic masculinity. masculinity. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That sounds... You know, to prepare for this show, this is what I did. Okay, good. This morning... My uh, son has got sort of his, his days and nights slightly mixed around. We're trying to fix that. But um, right. when I got up this morning, he was up, and I get up rather early. And so I told him, I said, you know, I'm doing this podcast this morning. I'm doing it on toxic masculinity. And, you yeah. know, just I wanted his take on it. Yeah. So, yeah. And my son, he's uh, 47. No, he's, no, he's, he's, he's 12. 12. He's yeah, about to turn 13. Tomorrow is his birthday. Oh, really? He's about to be 13. About to, about well, to, let's do a shout out. That's right. The B man is about to uh, hit yes. the big one three. Oh man! And, and um, change your life, by the way. It's already happening. I rough. think adolescence has already hit us with uh, <laughs> like a category five. Uh, it's taking you out. Yeah, There's it's no not doubt a, yeah, about it's it. Already, the it's, it's are going to rule the world. So there you go. But, Good um, luck with that. But I was asking him like this. You know, what, what I asked him, I just sort of get a sense from him. So he's he's someone who is in the process of of um, of having to deal with his gender. He is having to uh, to to begin that dance of what it is to be a man and what you know what what right. he would. Right. And so I asked him about Ty, and I, he, and I said, what is your definition of toxic masculinity? I okay. said, what, what did he say? And he said, well, it's usually, he said, somebody who is um, very aggressive, um, they, okay. Um, okay. They, uh, if they have conflict, they want to fight. And he said, they're basically jerks, you know? And then I said, well, what, what are the tropes? And he said, well, you know, they, can, they like guns, and um, they're, you know, big trucks, and um, what did he say? He said... Um, and they want to fight a lot. That's what he said. Okay, okay. And so I asked him, I said, well, so what is you, what do you think, of what is being masculine? Because he identifies as, you know, um, um, funny story on that. Isn't okay, it? You know? there you go. That was <laughs> a, yeah, that's a it, cliffhanger. Because, you know, second, I, I, yeah. I, you're supposed to start it in talking about your kids, about the birds and the bees and all that sort of stuff pretty early on. And so, right. you know, talking with my, my kid, this was like a couple of years ago. And okay, I'm like, you know, okay. As you know, one of these days you may find someone you really love, and I always keep it gender neutral and whatnot, because you know he may I don't know he's straight gay I don't know I don't my, my son he could, there could be a lot of things, Whatever. but I always keep it gender neutral. You know right. you may find someone and whatnot, and then about the third or fourth time of me doing this, he turned to me and he said, Dad, he said, I know what you're doing, 
and um, he is I'm not gay. Than you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he he's "I'm not. not gay." Okay, it's okay to be gay, and that's nothing wrong with being gay and all that. But I'm not gay, and okay. so you can drop that part. <laughs> okay, all right. That, so I know, said, "Okay, okay, we got, we got this." I, and, I knew from the beginning that your son was smarter than you, and he <laughs> well, was but the bar is already set pretty and, low, uh, and it's honest. already pretty low, so he can jump <laughs> right really now. High there, there are thing. loaves of bread out there smarter <laughs> than me. I'm not saying you know. So that's all not right, a, but I mean, you know, that's a very. I mean, at twenty. Twelve. He's he's drawing those conclusions. He was already he's saying work, it's not you know. Work, we yeah. also this is you know we we we've, we've, we keep him away from like R rated movies and whatnot. So um, we went to see this. Have you ever seen this? This the Hellboys. The one of them Hellboys. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Fantasy. From yeah, it's that uh, comic book Mac, series. Mac, Mac, Mag- Magnolia, I think, is a guy. Mac Magnolia. I used to read these things when. Um, wonderful comic books, by the way. If you ever get a chance. Books, first uh, first couple of movies were by um, uh, Gilmore del Toro. Yes. Who is a wonderful director, but they re- they remade the movie with a different director and whatnot, and so we went to see it. Now it was rated R, but I was thinking, okay, it's because there's going to be violence. But we show up, and there are things on there. You know, there are right. there are things going on, and at one point, I have to, you know, I turn to my son and I said, you know, I'm not sure if you should this, be seeing this, right. seeing this. And he said, he said, no, I don't worry, I know all about this sort of stuff. My your mommy gave me a pamphlet. <laughs> okay. And I said, All right. Okay. So, I don't know. so she gave you a pamphlet. <laughs> Got a pamphlet. What's in that well, pamphlet? I, I want to see know. the pamphlet. You need that pamphlet. Mm, I think I'm I probably, I, she probably should have. You know, I wanted to say, you, you know, your in mom. That pamphlet with an X across the. When thing, we started you know, dating, said, your it? mom should have gave me this pamphlet. Where was this pamphlet when I needed it? Because it could have come in handy. Man, that's a powerful <laughs> yeah. pamphlet. And I picture the pamphlet's probably like a, it's like a, it's got pop out, like you open up, do oh, you? Know, oh, like, what is what this? Kind of a, but, okay, yeah. no, no, that's not but, right. But, um, so I was asking my kid about this. He's it, got it covered. Most of the time when you're kind of a little concerned about, um, yeah. Bringing the subject up, he said, "Hey, relax." Dad. I got this. I, I you, got know, this. Been, you know, I've been, you know, I've right. been, that's you know, right. I've happens. been listening to some Andrew Dice Clay. But, <laughs> oh, uh, there we go. But yeah, but a uh, bing. But um, <laughs> for real. So, uh, but but I'm asking about this this you know mask and stuff. And so he, I ask him. He says, "Well, you know what? Uh, I like guns too. I think they're cool." So okay, so that that's okay. not necessary. He says, "Yeah." So what is you know? And I ask him. So so what kind of guy do you think you want to be? And he said, "Well, you know." Wow. Uh, yeah, I, the, the, the jury's kind of out on this, but, you know, I, I don't want to be a jerk. Okay, so I thought okay. that was, that's a pretty good thing. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty good answer uh, to a very tough mm, question. Well, it is, that, you know. uh, that you're asking a 12-year-old, well, you, your you, son, so, it, hey, hold off on my This is where my mind went on this, because <laughs> it's my son. I wanted to say, so what, I wanted to ask him, what sort of picture am I giving you of masculinity? Like, what, what am I, um... Is okay, this, a, this sounds a lot. This this really <laughs> does sound like a question uh, you want to answer for you, for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I want to tell like, you're it? asking a twelve year old to I'm help like, you what, out here somehow. Like, well, I don't know. You know, what, he and I are talking about um, manhood, and I'm I'm supposed to be in some way sort of an, an example of what that would be. And you know, uh, and I'm hoping, like you know, what I'm trying you know, not to roll my eyes over here. Go ahead. Yeah, well, that's what, you know, what, 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 what is that supposed to look like? And uh, you know, I didn't outright ask him, but I, I wonder, like, what, like, you know, like, yeah. like if you think about, like, like your dad or or yeah. um, men in your life who presented some sort of um, oh yeah, uh, we would say psychodynamic or psychologically that there's a difference between what's known as the ideal ego and the ego ideal. Okay. And the difference is that. You know, both of those are, are in some ways um, internalized. They are, um, they're like um, stars in the sky that we we aim towards or compass points. And um, the the ego, the ideal ego, is um, is is much more fixed. It is something that we have to be and that we always fall short of. It is tyrannical in a sense. Okay. And the ego ideal is more like. Okay, this is something that I think I might want to be, and it it provides guidance. And you can think of it like I think I've used an example before when we did a podcast back like three hundred years ago. Right. But um, yeah, we've done a few. We have we've done a few, and uh, like if if somebody came in and I, I was talking about this with with a seminar I was teaching, and I was like, one of my ego ideals and a picture of masculinity for me, okay. Mister Rogers. Right. Okay. I like that guy. You know. Okay. So um, if it were an ego ideal, then I you know this guy he's nice. Uh, I like the way he talks to people. I think he has a legacy that's pretty cool. I think I'll try to walk this a little and see if I can't bring things in. Okay. The ideal ego would be every day you wake up and you say, God, I'm not going to be like this. Or you at the end of the day, you go, I really fell short of all right. this. God, right, I'm, right. A, I'm a piece of crap. So I think there's a connection between this ideal ego and toxic masculinity. 
Okay. I think that there is nothing about masculinity or anything that would fall under the trope of masculinity. Maybe it's something I talk about if there's such a thing. But if there is such a thing as masculinity, right. you know, trucks and guns are cool. That's why people have them. But whenever they fall under the shadow of, of something that is, that is tyrannical, they become potentially toxic. Does that make sense? Right. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's um, kind of reactive to the environment or something mm -hmm. in the situation. They fall back. They're always short of it. Mm -hmm. So they may just overreact to that. I'm going to be more macho and mm -hmm. fight and do all the other things. That we, well, you don't, you don't hear about, about this concept much, but in the old days, you, you, if you're reading about this, they used to call it homosexual panic. Okay. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Yeah. Been a while back. I mean, yeah, I one of my favorite bands, by the way. Last time I saw Homosexual Panic, <laughs> they, you know, it's back in the nineties. There, there are a lot, a lot of were, bands yeah. that uh, you bring in that I've never heard of, yeah. and uh, but yeah, they're out there evidently. It was so the best heavy metal disco band that ever, you know. It's, okay. It was just uh, <laughs> those guys, you know. <laughs> Sometimes they might need to research their name and title. Yeah, their their, their bit, symbol but. was a um, was was one of those uh, one of those disco balls. What do you call it? Uh, mirror balls. Yeah, the mirror balls with thing, spikes. Yeah. <laughs> with spikes. Okay. <laughs> that was, that's uh, that was, so that's combining a couple of things. <laughs> that there, is. It like that. It's, I like what they were doing. But the old idea of homosexual panic was that um, that um, if you stirred at another man, feelings of it could be any feeling of intimacy, really. It would become rapidly sexualized, and they would become angry, and they would often act out, right. often becoming violent. Right. Like, you know, like... Um, um, You're questioning their masculinity. Right. What are you talking about? Reaction. You calling yeah. me gay? You, you talking to me? <gasps> you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's, that sort of thing happens. And I, I think that we don't talk about this notion of homosexual panic uh, anymore because, you know, we've, become the, we're, we've been able to embrace and become more balanced in terms of sexuality and, and, sure. and whatnot, but I still think that in some ways what we refer to as toxic masculinity or would be a, a version of that homosexual panic, an attempt to be able to embrace a masculine trope in such a way that it, it keeps you from having to think or feel things that the environment is inducing in you. Maybe. Right, right. And, it, mm -hmm. and, it, and then comes out uh, mm -hmm. in the interactions with others, mm -hmm. and you're kind of proving something that you can't prove necessarily. Mm -hmm. So you're you're sort of fighting the tide a little bit with mm -hmm. that. Well, I find that I find that whole thing kind of kind of interesting. I mean, are we? Uh, are, is this just we're just defining terms better now? We're trying to figure out what's going on with. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's an ideal that we can never reach, well, we'll, we'll think of you know, like we have uh, to settle on some of that, right? We'll think of one of the earliest pictures of masculinity in a way was, and I think about this, um, the Marlboro Man. Yes. Now a lot of people may not remember who that is, but for the longest time this was, you know, the lone cowboy, you know, smoking by himself, you know. Right. Uh, rugged masculine rugged guy out on the frontier, yeah, got he's the very, cattle drive and all of those. Yeah, it's yes, a, you know. That's right. And um that was sort of in a way an ideal ego. It was a, the notion that, you know, you don't cry. You have right. to be this um uh to, you have to be an army of one, you have to be solitary, you have to to maintain a control, um, you have to be um, capable of violent action mm -hmm. if the uh, situation requires it, you know, quick with the gun, you know. Yeah. And um, That's I a think... legacy that lives on, does it not? <laughs> I guess there's, well, there's so much of that in, in these days. And, and, and just one side a piece of that is that people... Uh, you can encounter very violent people mm -hmm. who can cause want to cause you harm, mm -hmm. and so there's some mm -hmm. there's some need for well, that what, in some times, in some ways. Think about some of the um, some of what his um, the the, uh, the the incel community. You remember, you know the incels, right? Sure. Yeah. Again, uh, not mentioned one of, them on the show before. Yeah, so not yeah, one of my know. favorite bands, the incels. But yeah, uh, that's right. Not a good band uh, these days. Right? And, uh, well, very small audience. Of mainly men. <laughs> <laughs> it is all men. Yes, yeah, right. uh, the involuntary celibates, and th again, this is a, a subculture that that gets a lot of flack, maybe for the wrong reasons. But there's this notion somehow that that um, to be a dude, um, to be worthwhile of 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 being a member of your gender, you have to be. You have to have a girlfriend. You have to have these things. You have to have, and that also carries that weight of the ideal ego. And I've encountered a number of patients I've worked with who. Uh, we we call um, in the shrink biz causing the cause, 
when the very thing that you are afraid of happening, the things that you do to keep it from happening, cause it to happen. Right. I mean, literally, it's a... And so the idea of... Um, um, I can think of a uh, patient I worked with a, few, a while back who desperately wanted a girlfriend and would talk about all the ways in which, you know, you know, there are all these men that seem less attractive than he was, had less, didn't have the success he had, but they always had girlfriends and he didn't. But when you begin to talk about how he would approach a woman, uh -oh. he would approach them with an air of either um, truly remarkable desperation okay. uh, or uh, the opposite um, and approached them in such a way that he was signaling to them that they were a thing he needed, sort of like he were buying rims for his car, right? Right. right. And right. either one of those send a message to the individual you're approaching that, man, this is probably not somebody this I is, should yeah, be. I yeah, should that's be, an uh, immediate turnoff for a lot of people. And he needs something in the middle between those two. Maybe needs, we can you know, find another approach. You know. I mean, he, you know, he. We, we would say in the in my end of the biz that if he were to approach them as a whole object with some right. genuine interest in maybe this is someone who I might want to just hang out with for at least an hour and find out who they are right maybe that would uh, that would be that would be nice you know <laughs> as opposed to you know either one of those uh, had uh, and, and I think I think to a degree he was he was trapped by this this ideal ego this notion that there's a thing that he has to be and he is constantly falling short of it. And I think to a degree that that is the the mixture of, you know, if you think of um, um, part of the incel manifestos that are that are would be considered toxic, there's this notion that women, and they'll often recur, they'll use the word females, they'll say females are. And okay. so they make these broad generalizations about the opposite sex using a term that already carries weight as if they're are you've already right. part objectified someone and it's made them the a, way you say the yeah, word it's in, in, female in it's yes, like oh, right. yeah. it's already got a it's already got there's already sort of a it's like you've rang the misogynistic bell already ding it's it's there <laughs> but um <laughs> with the way they say it and um uh their approach is has such a mixture of envy and anger and uh, underneath that is disowned shame that's being driven, I think, by this, by somehow that there are people out in the, in, in the world, m other men less than them who have more than them, and these women choose them, and so it, it creates this, this toxin, this swirl of, 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 and it's driven by envy and jealousy and, you well, know. All and, the wrong reasons. That right, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Which is yeah. an aside, I, I, I was listening to a, a podcast and they were talking about the difference between envy and jealousy. And I, and I often find that it's difficult to tease those two apart. But right. uh, I think jealousy is wanting the thing that someone has and envy is not wanting the person to have the fun that you're not having. Okay. And there's a difference between those two points. And right. one of them is more toxic. Like with sure. jealousy, you could say, man, I wish I had that boat. Right. You know, and right. then maybe you you know you get an extra job at you know the Cracker Barrel, okay. <laughs> and you save up money, and then you you get a dinghy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that's uh, right. I'm more as in the world of boats, I'm a dinghy. Okay, but um, could say a joke there, but I'll leave it alone. Right <laughs> yeah, this is good. That was okay. good. <laughs> but uh, um, Indy, however, is has has a touch. Uh, Melanie Klein says that the 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 um, uh, the main root of evil is envy. It is knowing that someone has the good and as opposed to trying to give the good to yourself or maybe even some admiration and gratitude that good exists, you simply want it destroyed. Wow. All right. Well, you don't own it. You just want to take it out. I want the, right. you know, I, the world. I am not happy and you have this thing, so I will take it from your hand and I will destroy it. And in some right. ways, when we see some of the manifesto of some of the school shooters we've seen, there's an element of that in it. Right. To go mm -hmm. in and uh, to um, to kill the chads and uh, what do they call the the women? The men were called chads. That hmm. was uh, one of the one of the school shooters. Um, there's the guy who shot up the sorority. I can't think of his name. And his in some of the videos that he has online that you right. can watch, he talks about that. And there's this this um, it's. Uh, narcissistic wounds, a feeling of entitlement, and just a, a, a string of toxic envy. Right. Yeah. Wow. This is uh, 
It's pretty heavy stuff, but it seems like it's in our culture now. Is this all cultural? Is this? Is, I mean, I know we're talking psychoanalytic. We're talking the individual and. The, but I'm giving a paper at psychoanalysis and culture in a couple of weeks. Oh come on! Yeah, and you know what well, the title of that paper to, is? Uh, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> it is, uh, wondering um, a little bit now. It's, um, feed the rich or eat the rich? Has psychoanalysis betrayed the middle class? How about that? Sorry. Wow. I kind of wow. To I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we How need about to that, hear, uh? hear more about that. And hopefully. Well, I've uh, got to write it because right now it's just a title. Okay. Th that's a thought. <laughs> and we got to get that thing on I paper. Gotta, yeah. And then you got to come in and help us understand what this, where, you, where you're well, going we'll with that paper. For but sure. we, we talk about the culture in this. Like, yeah. I was also thinking in my own journey in terms of being able to get a handle on what masculinity means. And as you know, I'm probably one of the most masculine people you know, right? Uh, hold, on like, for, hold on for this. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Just want to get Actually, that out Actually, the hack, he might be... Uh, <laughs> the hack is a good thing he's <laughs> that guy is come across the table right now. And <laughs> that guy is a chunk of man. That guy is a chunk of man. Am I wrong? I mean, Listen, that guy is... Uh, the nice. hack is out cutting trees off the property <laughs> and saying, yeah. dragging them you know, off. Yeah, he's doing all of that. So, you know, yeah. just shaking his hand, you get such a shot of testosterone, you're like, body hair, like, gross. <laughs> like, you know. Now, I, I shook his hand once, and I got hair in places I didn't know I even had. Oh. That's <laughs> I mean, a, we need to hear that. All right. That's how so, that uh, I'm so, glad, <laughs> glad he's not here to hear all of this. So he could defend himself, I'm sure, at least. No, no, but, no. Uh, he's, so, okay. so... Um, uh, I was thinking about this, this my own journey in masculinity. Maybe you can sure. think about f for you, like what, like how you yep. began to, you know. And I remember as a kid, I was um, I was probably close close to my son's age, and we had um, I come from a rural area in Tennessee, and cable had just happened. Okay, we'd heard about cable in some other cities, right? And we'd heard that it exists, yeah. <laughs> but up until about the age of thirteen or fourteen, I, um, you know, we had three channels, right? And one of those came in. Sometimes, if it rained, right. did you have to go out and hold the antenna or move <laughs> the antenna? It. Yeah, or, it, was, you know, it was all, and they yeah, went off that. at like ten o'clock at night, and all you got was that d. <laughs> That's it. That's right. <laughs> That's what you got, and then uh, just or, pattern, and you're out. <laughs> and, and then, then there's snow, right? That's yeah, all you got. You go. And if you woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't sleep, you know, you you know you. You looked at the dog. That's really all. <laughs> that's, that's about it. You had nothing <laughs> else going. Yeah, the dog was like, we why need are you to go back and, and just hear more about that uh, in your childhood because it might explain a number of things that we're working on here. <laughs> it could, so, it could. But, there uh, were a lot of other things. But we too. don't have time for yeah, that right, now. Yes. So bring yourself back to that so, question. So, so, right. 13 and 14, I remember watching this, this show came on called Night Flight. And this was actually before MTV, I think. MTV, it maybe had just started, but, and I, but Night Flight was a show that you could watch videos. Okay. And it was on to like one in the morning. Okay. Late. So if it's Friday night and you've you know you're sitting around and as you might want to do as an adolescent or uh, early adolescent, and videos would come on, and I remember yeah. watching the videos. And at that time, I you know my my musical interest had had gone from um, um, Kiss in the uh, third and fourth grade to um, oddly enough ABBA somewhere around the age of nine or ten. Right. And then uh, I think I had. Um, uh, that sister. disco that explains a lot, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. And then my uh, my my sister had left some albums, and one of them was the Moody Blues in Search of the Lost Chord. Yep. And then there was a Styx Classics. album. So both these sort of you know were that. So I, I was, and, but then yeah. I began to go into a heavy metal phase, and I, I think that in some ways um, metal was a way to define yourself. Um, growing up in a pretty uh, strict religious uh, uh, community, um, it was a way to sort of to begin to integrate parts of yourself that couldn't be reflected and mirrored back in the culture you were in, you okay. know? And um, I was big into uh, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, especially Iron Maiden. Okay. You ever go through a Maiden? Did you go through a Maiden phase? Never been there. <laughs> okay. Not a, no. Not a, I was more with the progressive English rock stuff. That <laughs> that's right. That's right. mentioned before. I never yeah. moved off that phase. Well, I, I, I kind of I kind of no. went to Prague had a, you know, after, after my metal phase, ELP and Yes and... King Crimson and and uh, you know Van de Graaff Generator. If you remember those guys, <laughs> early Genesis. Okay, all right, early <laughs> Genesis, but pre pre Genesis. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, right. early Genesis will be when when Phil Collins was just the drummer and the yeah, lead singer was Collins, Peter Gabriel. I actually saw him in person when he was the drummer in Genesis at one point. Really? Yeah, you, so back in the day. Yeah. You saw Sorry to admit was, all was, that. Was, that gives you too much about me. But all right, was come Peter back Gabriel singing at the time? Yeah. 
Boy, you, that is old. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not saying it's old. Um, that's like, yeah, that's. I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna let that go. But it was at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, and it was a wonderful concert. Yeah, so boy, that would have been. Boy, I would have killed to see oh, that. Oh yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Was but. Peter Gabriel wearing the the flower yes, pot? Um, hat? Uh, yes, the big box that would <laughs> rotate around his head and and things like that. See, so yeah, there was a lot of that days. going on. So, but but I think to some degree, music is how we sort of begin. And for my for my son, I think it's it's uh, often video games at this point have been sort of so. But um, so um, I remember watching these videos, and um, um, the Talking Heads came on. That's once in a lifetime. And I remember seeing David Bar- 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 Burn, Burn, David Byrne, yeah, and um, I was like, "Wow, look at that guy! He's sort of weird, he's odd, mm-hmm. geeky guy." Talented. But he's, yeah, he is. And I was like, you know, I like the song. And then a Van Halen song came on, and there's David Lee Roth. And I was like, God, I am definitely more David Byrne than David Lee Roth. Okay. And really right. struggling with that. Like, okay. you know, yeah, this yeah. is not like I this find is. find this model, role this, model out there for and me. I, and I, 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 get, you know, I, I think I am, and, and really struggling with, you know, what, just on some level cognizant of the fact that some of the ideal ego, some of the, the, um, the pictures of masculinity that were being presented to me that I, I was not going to be able to fit that. And what did it mean? You know? Right. And I think that um, when you mention, like, for me at least, music and art in general, I've often grabbed, so I will find a, a, a someone there that I, would, um, that I would have an interest in that could help define that okay. and help so. And I, I think that that's a journey that, that most of us are on. And, and, but what about with you? Like, did, did, are you conscious of, of figures well, of masculinity? I, you know, when, that when when you were talking about the, the earlier days when you were a teenager and those kind of things, and um, <laughs> I'm not sure that I had to test any of that out. It mm-hmm. was for me. I was real active and playing ball and doing mm-hmm. all the little team sports and all of the other stuff, riding bikes and doing those mm-hmm. kind of things. And I'm afraid to say it, but I don't think I had a clue about what was going on in that in that process. I can only look back now and try to recall some of it. But, um, well, maybe that's a difference because um, I mean, I can I can list out mm-hmm. some of you know the ones that we the, the movie stars and other people that we that mm-hmm. we saw, and but I never really like uh, at least consciously I tried to project myself and say who was I in who am mm-hmm. I in this particular picture or movie mm-hmm. or those kind of things. So. Uh, but I know it was happening, but mm-hmm. uh, but, see, really but maybe sure that's the thing happened. because I think that you know that that was not my. I mean, I I rode rode bikes, and uh, hung out with friends and whatnot. But sure. uh, team sports, I was not. That's not a. That's not a world I could move in. Like I was aware that, you know, there was something too aggressive about that. There was something too, um, you know, that that didn't fit, and it couldn't fit, and so. Um, it it generated a um, and maybe that's good. Maybe that you know if um, there's a, certainly a lot less angst in the needing to find yourself if there's already sort of a predefined role that you can fit yourself in. Right. 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 And I think that you know those were not. Um, but I think I think one of my struggles it, it, when I was playing little league baseball and I didn't play football, I played baseball and mm-hmm. those kind of things. But I had to take piano lessons at the same time. So the piano teacher was across the road from the baseball field. And I remember reluctantly, as I entered the piano lessons, looking at the baseball field, thinking, <laughs> wow, I'd rather be there. So there was, a, there was, a, there was all kind of little struggles, yeah, yeah. minor struggles that mm-hmm. were going on during that time. But, um, but it's interesting yeah. because for you, the baseball field, I can see that for me, I would see it as a place of dread when I was a kid. Okay. That is a place of humiliation. Oh, yeah. You're going to drop the ball. You're not yeah. going to catch the fly ball. It's going to hit me. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, rem- I remember a friend of mine, Ian, <laughs> he was a couple of years younger than me, but I remember he got, he was playing baseball and he took it right in the face. Oh, and he had come to on. Have like, oh, actually, it was Russ Farmer and he was in my grade and he had to have like, like oh, six stitches all over his lip. Terrible. And it looked, I mean, he, his whole face was misshapen. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to get on that that's field. A, that's a dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, right, you know? Right. And so there was humiliation, danger. <laughs> it was not an area that I could, you know, I could I could excel. So, but the areas I could excel is I was always, you know, I was the smartest kid in class. I was the one that, you know, always got things. And so there was, there was, that was an area that I could feel some comfort in. Like I could, right. I could be in that space and say, okay, this is. This is comfortable. Yeah, well, now to, in to, algebra class, I was like, 
I'm, 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 I'm in my element. I'm, I'm, okay, there you go. <laughs> you okay. were that kid that solved the problem, and then the rest of us looked like, okay, yeah, we're not really sure what, what just happened. Um, but, yeah, it's sort of, uh, there's two things. One, one is that this notion of sort of going back and analyzing that. Mm. You know, mm. that's a recall. We've got to go back and kind of project mm. into that time frame um, to, to make sense out of it. But also doing that in the moment. You know, at that time, you were saying, hey, this is not for me and, mm. and those kind of things, making those, those choices. Um, does seem like um, our, our culture and our society, what we were talking about a moment ago, mm. is sort of really begin – we're beginning to look at the nuance of, of things now and trying to sort well, these out. I think, I think there's an, an element of this that, 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 that's, that's interesting because my, uh, my son, he, um, I remember uh, we were playing this, uh, ever played that, that, that game Diablo? This was Diablo 2, I think, or 3. Whatever it is. Video game. Yeah, so we're playing it. A lot of fighting. And, you know, and between you and me, I'm not a fan of video games. They make me nervous. But my kid wanted to play video games, so we're going to play the video games. And so, there you go. Good dad. And we moving spent, on, moving we spent hours. Like, like 12 hours later. My, oh, I literally, my goodness. I got played okay. so much that my thumb... Got a got a blister on it, right? And it like, I'm and like you couldn't I'm, move it the oh next day. God. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. My son, he's like, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah, he's got you. Yeah, how's how's this? A A B slide, <laughs> yeah, he's, click. Yeah, he's knowing all these things. All that. So um, uh, he's like, man, you got to see my new character in Diablo. I'm like, oh, this this character is so cool. This character is wonderful. Boy, telling me I'll create this cool. Yeah. And so he puts it up, and it's a female character. Okay. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting because when I was his age, that's not what you would. You couldn't possibly, even if you no thought way. the female character was cool, your you friends could, like, would. <laughs> that would be the end of that. <laughs> He'd be like, so as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, like it's in. And, and I imagine that if he had other dads, may not be directly, but they would have given him subtle hints. Okay, you know, you can you can secretly really think that's time. cool, yes, that's right. but yes, don't right. you know, don't you know. He goes, yeah, he's talking about the add-ons and the features yeah, and the it armor kind of, here. Yeah, it probably comes out of some worry, too, about how he'll be treated out. And, and that's what parents sure, do. Sure, sure. It's kids. like, you so, know. Yeah. Um, well, that, that, but as an aside, my, my, my son has, like, he has, like, really long hair. It's all the way down to it's all the way down here. He's okay. Got pretty long hair. And I keep telling him it's cool because right now it's cool to have a transgender kid. So I think right now. Okay, <laughs> you're setting him. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you just, you just have he, but he's, he's he's not he's not transgender. Yeah. Uh, well, Again, that, that's that other conversation. He said, "Look, I'm a dude. I'm not." Uh, but I, uh, I really think you need to ask him more questions. He seems to have a lot more answers <laughs> than, uh, than. But but I thought there's something about the culture that shifted, that that and with every shift, because he can be comfortable identifying with and being interested in, um, um. Female characters. Sure. He can. He can be sure. interested in um, non-binary characters. He can be interested in, uh, in, in ambiguously gendered characters with, with no... It doesn't seem that there's any tension in him about this. It's not right. a... And right. so I think there's something about the cultural shift. Right. And with any shift, it generates other things. And I think part of what we begin to... I don't think there was the concept of toxic masculinity 20, 30 years ago. No. That's what a dude was. And as it shifted, you know, you, you were playing earlier. What's that guy we were listening to? Uh, Chris D'Elia. Chris uh, D'Elia. Comedian. Uh, mm -hmm. Has a podcast and a uh, very funny guy. Um, and he was talking about he cancel culture. He was talking culture. about cancel culture. And that, that and, was a topic not long ago But, but us, part so, of yeah. what I think drives that, and he was talking about, like, why did suddenly Johnny Depp become somebody we hate? Yes. And I think yes. it has a lot to, to do with 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 our our notion of masculinity of identity have shifted, and in some ways, at one point he was riding the wave of that because he represented sort of the the male who was who was um, who was comfortable playing all these you know adventurous uh, characters, but also and like he played pirates. ambiguous uh, the Mad Hatter, um, the uh, Ed Wood. You know the guy who dressed in drag. Um, he played. Um, he played Edward Scissor's hand. Edward Scissor's yeah, hand. Dad, he yeah. played. Uh, what was the other one where he did um, um, in the remake of Charlie and Chocolate Factory? He played the 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 um, sort of a Michael Jackson as um, the guy who. Uh, um, did you see the remake of Charlie? I, I guess I did, and I'm, okay. I'm, I'm straining to try to get people up with that. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but he did, so, so at one point, I think he was, he, was, he was right there on the mark of how we were beginning to rethink masculinity. And as a result of that, 
he may no longer be on that mark. There was some domestic violence, or at least uh, um, some uh, um, assertion mm. by his spouse of domestic violence and okay. and whatnot. And um, so, I think there's a point at which we can now begin to label certain elements of masculinity problematic, and we mm-hmm. can call them toxic in ways that we couldn't before. Yeah. There's a I've never actually seen this show, but there's a podcast um, I like it a lot called uh, Why Theory. Uh, mm-hmm. If you were looking for Lacanian podcasts, okay, <laughs> it's uh, they were talking about Mad Men and how uh, I don't know if you've seen that show, Mad well, Men. Well, they advertising agency back in the fifties, yeah. sixties, maybe. And how like you know like uh, they're they talking about there's a scene I didn't see it, but where they're he and his family are picnicking, and he gets up and he just takes his pick the the uh, the 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 the. Plate? No, the 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 the, the thing you laid out. Tablecloth. Tablecloth. Yes. Okay. Well, they they were it. laying, but it wasn't table. They were laying on the ground. I okay. think it maybe it was a tablecloth. He just wraps it up and then goes into the woods and throws all the trash. Okay. Because that was a common thing for people. That's to what do. people did. <laughs> you know, you yeah, know, just put it in the dump or just put it out. And no one will see and it. And they're you know they ride in the car. Everybody's window, the, right? both okay. he and his wife are smoking and the kids are in the back and the windows are rolled up. Oh yeah. And nobody knows uh, all these sort of things. So as culture shifts, I think now we can begin to label things. A pro- there are problematic areas of masculinity that we can now begin to think about. It, we may go overboard sometimes and over-label those things. Maybe Johnny Depp is a victim of that. But there is something good, I think, in the, in the fact that I think the world that my kid in, inherits, at least in this sense, he has the ability to express himself and own parts of himself that he couldn't before. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No, it's a, a little a little more freedom, uh, 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 and and the restrictions are, and we're defining things, mm-hmm. and the idea of cancel culture. Wow, mm-hmm. that's that was a that was a great topic. I know I'm glad we talked about it, but it, it seems like there's some real problems there when you happen now to find someone's opinion mm-hmm. you don't like, mm-hmm. and, and you, you and find all the your balance? group uh, tries to take them out. I mean, what's how do up we with create that? a space where where that um, uh, I, if my kid were to see David Byrne and David Lee Roth, I don't think he would feel anywhere near the tension that I might have felt at that time. Mm-hmm. I think he now mm-hmm. has the option of thinking about himself slightly differently, and that's a good thing. It's certainly possible that, though, there's still room for David Lee Roth in that equation. Sure. There's still room for all sorts of visions of masculinity yeah, masculinity is not necessarily bad. Right. Okay, and, and maybe there, there are, there's a way to be able to, like you said, with the cancel culture stuff, to be able to create a space where there can be different ideas and whatnot without them, you know. Like, um, uh, we didn't talk about this in the cancel culture thing, but it's re- related in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, okay, do we, do we allow a space for people who think Nazis are cool? Right. Because, you know... And who think that certain elements of masculinity that define role, gender roles, women stay at home, uh, women aren't a lot allowed to, to, you know, they have a minimal agency. Mm-hmm. Um, if all these things are, you know, if, if, if is, do those folks have a place at the table? Do, right. um, there's a pastor that, um, I can't think of his name, but he has a church, uh, and he has a fairly large YouTube following that uh, quotes Leviticus and thinks gay people should be killed and the government should be executing them. Right. He, he has a fairly large following. Does, do we cancel him or do we create a space at the table and, and tolerate him in a way? I don't know. Well, it, it does seem like we've got a long way to go uh, yeah. as, a, as a culture, as a society, as uh, people on planet Earth. Uh, we're, but we're learning about these things and mm-hmm. we're trying to make I sense of I do think, it. though, that um, we probably should... Um, volunteer or involuntarily sterilize everybody who goes to a Kid Rock concert. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kid Rock seems to be your nemesis or something. I don't know why. We're going to have to talk about it. Well, see, that just canceled, quote, uh, the, uh, what we've been talking about here and reinforced the bad idea of that. But, yeah, should they have a voice at the table? Well, um, Maybe yeah. they have a, a I mean, voice at the kitty table. It, it's it's <laughs> like freedom of speech. I mean, it's all those sort of basic concepts that we have in our society that uh, if you open it up for one. Well, what about this guy though? All, y- y- and, if uh, if he has a following, everybody counts, as someone said, or no one counts. I think is the phrase. But if this guy has a following who wants gay people executed by this by the state, um, what if his speech gets a couple of folks really? 
angry and upset, and they go shoot up another gay club. And yeah. they say, "Hey, this yeah. is so. Th- there, there's there's some there's some necessary tension around this." Well, and, it's, a, it's realistic as well. Um, and I know if we go a little further in this conversation, and and you're going to say something to the effect of. Um, I know we're not supposed to talk about politics, and then it opens up. So uh, hopefully we can uh, refrain from that in this time. But so dog if, whistles. If we give, <laughs> all right, that's all. But if we give, um, yeah. So everyone counts, or no one counts. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have to open it up. We have to have a sense of tolerance about that and understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think? Is that, will that kind of thing self-correct over time? Uh, like your son, different from you as you were coming up, and the well, it's funny because I've been, I've been, kind of move? I've been reading. Um, uh, the, the Zizek guy's got a new book out. Oh, really? He's got a new book out. I've been can, reading. Is it? it? Can we? Can we read that? I mean, is it possible for the it's normal human one. being to read? <laughs> this one's this one's I'm chewy. Little, I want to go there, but I, I, mean, it's, it's, I haven't uh, gotten through the first paragraph. Uh, don't understand it's chewy. what happened. It really is. It, there's some things on there. But, um, you know, uh, I, I think he would have a criticism of this notion of progress that um that and he would he's a real critic of Pinker, for instance. Oh, really? Okay. That um I need that. That's that, coming up on a, another podcast. And it's a pink, talk about the latest book. That uh, this notion of progressive enlightenment, he would say, you have to be careful because this could be an ideological um, uh, cover-up for something that we're not seeing, and that there is that any time that we get tricked into thinking that we have some handle on the narrative, that there's something we've repressed, there's something missing. That will find its way. That will, you know. So, so I think that um, there is um, saying that it's getting better. That I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that per se, mm-hmm. but to, to be able to understand that, um, um, to to in any way kid ourselves that this isn't a continual process, a continual dialectic and movement that doesn't have an end. Maybe that's what he might say. Right. We have to be careful that you know that. Um, um, uh, not to talk about politics, but uh, you know, uh, I, those on the know, left. I'm sorry, I just <laughs> predicted that coming up. So uh, one point for me over here. <laughs> All right, go but ahead. <laughs> the idea that, like, you know, the role of of uh, Zizek's criticism of of the American left is the goal is to impeach Trump or get rid of him. Right. And um, that's not to in any way address the reason he's there. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, yeah. The or, underlying or it's not like, you know, and so there, there out. is, there's the problem of, you know, why is he there? What does it mean? What not to, you know, not to be troubled enough to be, you can be lured away from by his outrageous tweets and what appear to be just, you know, uncivilized behavior on lots of levels. Um, without thinking about what he means, and mm-hmm. that, that that I think is 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 the difficult. If if we are tricked into thinking that it is, first off, if we if we were tricked into thinking somehow things are getting better and there's this progress that's moving inevitably forward, he's already a a problem because. That, I mean, not, I'm not sure if that's progress. That's, yes, that's questionable about that. <laughs> that's uh, not, not so many levels. But Well, Pinker, Pinker makes that argument in his uh, Better Angels books, but also his Enlightenment Now, the newest, the latest mm-hmm. book by him, and the charts and the mm-hmm. science that say, mm-hmm. hey, we've had left, less violence mm-hmm. and so forth. But um, it's a complicated question, mm-hmm. so it can't be answered just like, this is getting better. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to write a, a, sli- a, a slightly more... A cynical and um, um, dark take on this whole thing, and the title of my book is called "Do Not Resuscitate." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I look forward to reading that. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, that's that's kind of interesting. So, this idea of um, toxic masculinity—I mean, how prevalent is it? Is it is, this is this is a small number of people who are there and 
or is it the cancel culture sort of pointing to it and well, blowing a, it up? There's out a of higher number of uh, folks like? with toxic masculine traits at kid rock concerts. <laughs> okay. All right. but, uh, Here we go. <laughs> no, but I mean, how big of a problem is this? Um, well, I, I, I would uh, like to, if, if it were up to me, what I would keep is, as you know, I'm a, as a psychologist, I would keep the elements of it um, that let's say that what is toxically masculine are the things that gender us in a damaging way. And we can all agree that the notion that boys don't cry is a toxic masculine trope. Right. And it is not good. It leads to all sorts of things. So maybe what we can say is that it is prevalent that all of us to a degree are uh, wounded in our gendering. The minute we accept and to begin to move in culture within a certain uh, gendered parameter, there are things that are done to us that are potentially toxic. Sure. And I think that is still maybe less prevalent in some ways, but still prevalent, right. and that we need right. to address that. That, yeah, that I guess our politics and our culture really brought that out. And I'm yeah. talking about the Civil War and things like that. I mean, come on, are we really yeah, going yeah. backwards? Have we lost that uh, control of these kind of things? The idea that anybody would so, take a bullet for Trump, I find uh, remarkable. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just you know, <laughs> to each his own. Or well, as my as, as my son would say, you do you. <laughs> you do you. I like that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's pr pretty straightforward there. Uh, maybe there's a message in there for you. I'm not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> I think he's talking directly to you he now could, that he I could. think about it. So. We do have this co constant conflict over music because he says he hates music. Oh and wait, it, now that's that. You know, I, I can tell you right now what he's doing with that. But uh, <laughs> right, right, maybe I should share. Maybe I should share it. This he's moment. ready. He's My defining. What, what do you think he's doing? What do you think he's doing with it? I think he's rattling your chains over there, and uh, he wants a response. This is a way to engage you into the conversation, and uh, you are an easy mark. So I'm thinking he's pulling you in every yes. time. Yes. Here we go. Yes. I mean, it's a way to both engage but also define himself. Like, like I, I think he, you know, like one of the reasons why I think that um, I, dis, I don't dislike it so much anymore, but I just loathed football was right. because my father liked it. Okay. And I think that right, there, there was, some, that was, that was I think, that's what I was thinking. There had to be some way, right? So it's uh, it's to engage, here. but also to, to, to you know, okay, look, I am I know you like this, and it's really important to you. But for me to be me, I'm gonna be the opposite. I, I got to get out of your shadow somehow, so I'm going this way. There you so, go. You know. So, yeah, I, I mean that's uh, the way the world works. That's father son, uh, which might be a good show at some point. Maybe we need to bring that in. Although I think we've been doing that lately. Yeah, now you that bring I my kid in here, see what happens. <laughs> Oh, See really? What? Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, um, you may be on your way out if we bring him in. Okay, <laughs> Actually, so this well, might Remember not... in the old days when we were over at, uh, at the college? Right. Uh, he, was, he showed up a couple times. Uh, he, he did. <laughs> now, I, I, was, I kept wondering about him because, um, you know, he's got, he had his iPad and he's, everything's going on around him, a lot of things moving, and, and uh, he's kind of calm over there. And I'm thinking, <laughs> wow, he's absorbing this. What's he going to yeah, do with it? Saying, what, you know, what's going to happen nuts. next? But he was, uh, he was taking it in. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I'd love to get him in uh, um, in the studio. That would be that would be fantastic. And um, it, he would uh, it, it would pro a short conversation with him um, would probably explain a lot of things could, about could, what we're having to have. put up with well, here. Well, it's interesting in because when my as my friends, their sons, we have we have several friends whose son are the same age. As I watch their son's age, I begin to understand their dads better. Like I begin to see. Right. Like, like, yeah. th they are an unadulterated version or versions of their dad are suddenly presented to you, and so you can literally see the developmental um, uh, concerns that their fathers had to navigate. And I can see it. I'm like, wow. And I'm sure right. you can see the same with my son. Like, you could see, you know, how I would, I would imagine that, you know, that. I, my, I, if you saw it, you probably gonna say, "Okay, I can understand where, right, what, right. where, why, why this Dan guy is the way he is." It well, that's yeah, that's, that, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, pro that's interesting that you can sort of see, uh, you can see the father through the son, and mm -hmm. uh, just uh, that connection. Um, on the other hand, though, I, we'll I, say that my son looks a lot more like the, uh, the guy who uh, does our yard. He looks like one of the yard guys. Yeah. 
Okay. Like a dead ringer. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, we'll have to find out. We'll have to <laughs> investigate that a little. Or maybe Funny. we don't. We do not yeah. investigate that anymore because uh, that might get us into some kind of trouble here. And then we're doing marriage counseling afterwards. Yeah, so yeah. No, we won't do it. Mm. All right. So final thoughts on this uh, this idea of to toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. So are we saying to the, the masculine out there, tone it down, get in touch with your feelings? What are well, we, you, you, what's yeah, the I message think the way here? through this, the way through this is, is um, greater complexity. Anything that limits the scope of a system, I think, is potentially symptomatic. So the goal is subjective complexity. So the goal is, if I could go back in time and talk to my younger self when he was seeing the David Lee Roth and the David Byrne, to be able to say there are elements of you in both of these folks. I mean, David Roth, right, Roth is a right. funny guy, highly intelligent, sure. in some ways was a parody of the very things that you felt were oppressive. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's not. And if you look even closer, so the Marlboro Man, I, I don't know the Marlboro Man, but um, his equivalent would be Clint Eastwood or John Wayne. And, uh, you know. Eastwood's a is a director capable of um, some very sophisticated understanding of himself and the world complexity. Mm -hmm. So I think the goal would be is, it's 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 okay to label something as p potentially problematic, and that is a sign that you then need to engage with it. Right. That's when the dance begins. So it's not a matter of canceling or cutting away, but engage. What does it mean to be this? Why would it? Why is it there? How does it reflect parts of you? How might it inform you in some ways? Parts of it you might want to own. But I, I think the goal is... Those are great questions. You know, move toward complexity. A system should become richer. Um, the place at the table, as we have you know, non-binary, as we have uh, folks who identify as transgendered, it should make us m better to better understand who and what we are as a culture, as individuals, we should the that complexity is coming it is it's like a tidal right. wave right so I, I mean we we need to be able to own more and more of it i like it i i, I mean i like the idea that the the recommendation is that first recognize that the is much more complexity in our relationships as our mm -hmm. with our inner selves with other people and all those things that that uh in in our culture and our society and we need to do something to better understand that and those questions that you just um ask I, i'm wondering if people are there and so i guess i'm uh this is, brings out the pessimist a little bit i'm generally optimist uh so to speak but uh people have to get educated they have to have some insight mm -hmm. they have to start thinking about these tough questions that countered their beliefs mm -hmm. that they held on and well that, and that's, th those are the interesting uh i guess challenges yeah. ahead and i think that's why this 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 notion of of engagement that whatever destabilizes you is um, uh, in a cyclic sense you you can you can spit it out um, you can evacuate it into someone else and that's where that homosexual panic comes in or you can get better at your suffering you can dance and engage with the things that destabilize because they make you richer and um, I do think that they're that is a hard road, and a number of people, maybe even Johnny Depp, might get uh, trampled in the uh, process. But uh, yeah, was, we, we keep dinner. walking it. We, we keep walking it. Yeah, we keep walking, keep living life. All right, so um, enjoy it. Make sense out of it. Start mm -hmm. to think about um, mm -hmm. these tough questions and uh, ask yourself those tough questions and work through it. It may help out. You might be enlightened a little bit. Mm -hmm. and maybe in a, it's a better world. All right, so. All right, I like it so far. That was uh, that was good. I, I'm not sure exactly where we were going with toxic masculinity, but yeah. uh, I thought you would be talking about I'm yourself gonna, a lot during this. Whole I'm going to go and get know. some smokeless tobacco. That's how. I, I'm okay, gonna, you're going to uh, start spitting. Okay, no, please. Um, we have a no smoking or spitting sign here in the studio, mm. so uh, not not appreciated. All right, my friend, I'm glad to have you in the studio. Let's uh, let's stop there and we'll talk. Boom. Later. Thank you.